treatment landscape for model peripheral neoplasms is changing very rapidly. Right? And in a good way, it's increasingly having many more options for patients with myeloid proliferative neoplasms. But I would separate it really into two groups. First, there are those individuals with essential thrombocythemia uh, and polycythemia vera. These individuals, we have newer therapies such as interferons, we have potential use of JAK inhibitors, we have some experimental therapies, as well as prior therapies we've used and become accustomed to, including hydroxyurea, phlebotomy, and aspirin. But we're learning much more about how to use these therapies, how to combine them, uh, what constitutes success with these therapies, what should constitute a change in terms of therapy. And there are new therapies being developed in the future that will impact this group of individuals with uh, earlier MPNs, ET and PV. For patients with myelofibrosis, the treatment is evolving. Patients with myelofibrosis are affected in different ways. It's more, it is a, uh, in some ways, a more problematic disease. Uh, there is evolution of our most impactful therapy of stem cell transplantation. I think we have a better sense of in which patients we should consider that treatment uh, and how that can be applied in the safest way. We also have more medical treatments. We just saw in 2019 the approval of fedratinib as the second specific JAK inhibitor approved for patients with myelofibrosis. We additionally now have truly dozens of clinical trials of new therapies in development that are in clinical trials right now that might be helpful for patients with myelofibrosis who've either had ruxolitinib or have a suboptimal response to ruxolitinib or sometimes even newly diagnosed patients. So I would say the future is very bright. It is key with a treatment to first understand what is the treatment, what is the dose, kind of what is the goal. Each of the treatments have different goals. Some of the goals are to decrease the likelihood of blood clots or bleeding. Uh, and frequently we assess whether we're protecting against the blood clots or bleeding by bringing down elevated counts. Is the plate count high and we're trying to bring it into the normal range? Uh, is the hematocrit high and we're trying to bring that to under 45%? Is the white blood cell count high? Have we lowered each of those? So first it's around controlling blood counts, if that is the goal. Uh, as well as trying to decrease that risk of blood clots or bleeding. Second, if patients have symptoms associated with their MPN, sometimes itching, sometimes symptoms associated with high counts, sometimes enlargement of the spleen or symptoms associated with the spleen, have we reduced or uh, nullified those symptoms? Have we shrunk the spleen if the spleen was enlarged? And then finally, we assess our goal by trying to be sure that patients are not progressing or getting worse on the disease. So depending upon the treatment, we first assess what is our goal? Is it to improve counts? Is it to improve symptoms? Is it to shrink the spleen? And have we accomplished one, two, or all three of those goals? Or was only one of those our goals to begin with?